Hi, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, in this video segment, I want to introduce a concept called oxidation numbers. Oxidation numbers are a tracking method, or you can think of it as an accounting method, to assign a relative electron distribution within a molecule or a compound. And the main goal is so that we can track changes in electrons. We can see if electrons were um, lost or gained within a chemical reaction. So we assign these oxidation numbers. Now, ionic charges are a subset. So an ionic charge is a subset for a single element of an oxidation number. So if I have sodium chloride, the sodium is Na plus one. It's ionic charge is plus one, and its oxidation number is plus one. So the ionic charge of singular ions is an oxidation number, but not vice versa. It's a subset of those. Um, so when we do this, there are some rules that we want to <clears throat> make sure you understand. If we have an uncombined element in its natural state, um, its oxidation number is zero. Now, that, that doesn't have anything to do with the state of matter, just how it is found. So iron solid is zero and iron liquid is zero. Okay, if we melt it, it's still zero. Um, so I want you to know that if it's a, it's a pure element all by itself, not bonded to anything, it's zero. Uh, if it is in a compound, it's oxidation number. If it's an ionic compound, like I said before, is equal to its ionic charge. So let's take a look at that iron and sulfur example because I want to make an important point there. If we have Fe2S3 and you calculated the charge in that, we have two irons. Iron can be plus two and plus three. We're going to assign sulfur to be as negative as it can be. This is what you did back when you first learned naming. There is, you know, nothing in the upper right hand corner indicating a leftover charge, so that equals zero. That tells us that each iron is plus three. Each sulfur is minus two. You don't want to multiply them and get plus six and minus two. You do not want the sum of the oxidation numbers. You want the individual oxidation numbers, individual, okay? Um, for each element in that compound so that we can track the exchange of electrons. Okay. Now, there are some always, other always rules that we want to memorize. Um, so binary ionics are their ionic charge. As you're doing this, just like when we did the naming, group one is always plus one, group two is always plus three, and um, group two is always plus two. You can think of group three as plus three, but I, I teach my kids a different trick called the silver steps. In the silver steps, for the level that we will be working at, it's a good way to memorize an always rule. You find silver on the periodic table, and that's your first step. And then you're going to go up the next step, and we're going to add zinc, and cadmium, and then we'll add a third step, and we're going to add aluminum, gallium, and indium. And I like it because it's a nice pattern. If we can conceptualize from the periodic table, we don't have to memorize. And in the silver steps, our first step, there's one at plus one. The second step, there's two at plus two. The third step, there's three at plus three. And for our purposes, those are pretty firm rules. The chances you'll see indium and gallium are pretty slim, but it does make a really nice pattern on the periodic table. Okay, and um, so that's one of our firmer rules. Fluorine's a very firm rule. Always minus one, period. Okay, if it's in a compound, it's minus one. Otherwise, it's pure F2 and it's zero. Hydrogen's a pretty firm rule. Um, hydrogen's going to be plus one with a very few exceptions, and that's when we have hydrides. Uh, the only time that hydrogen would be electronegative enough for us to give it a negative charge 
is with a metal. So we'd have calcium hydride, sodium hydride, aluminum hydride, um, and that's when we would assign hydrogen to be negative one. So it's pretty firm. You're not going to see that very often, and it's very recognizable. Okay. Otherwise, hydrogen is going to be plus one. Now, oxygen can be a little tricky. We have a singular compound, OF2. We have one oxygen. Let's say we don't know its number. Um, but we know fluorine. We know that fluorine, there are two of them, and we know it's negative one, and the compound is zero. This isn't a class. This is a singular example, and, uh, and it's oxygen difluoride. If we solve that, we get oxygen is equal to plus two. So that's a very unique example. I've seen that less so on AP tests, a little bit on IB tests and American Chemical Society, or if you um, take some of your standardized chemistry tests, uh, you'll see this as kind of a memorized multiple choice. So make sure you keep that in mind. Now, there, there is a class that is very important, and that class are the peroxides. There's also superoxides, a few others. We're not going to um, come across those uh, typically. But when in doubt, calculate oxygen. Okay, it, it's not always negative two. It's almost always negative two. Um, certainly once you get to ternary molecules um, and, and larger, then oxygen's going to be negative two. Okay, so if you saw, say, sodium dichromate, that's a ternary compound. Automatically, you can assign that oxygen to a negative two. When you're going to come across your peroxides are in binary. So just be a little careful when you see oxygen in a binary compound, especially with groups one and two would be your most common. And what we have there is instead of seeing Na2O, in which the sodium's plus one and the oxygen's minus two, we see Na2O2. And those are our peroxides. Sodium, those are each plus one, which means that the oxygen's each minus one. Another example you should be familiar with is water. Hydrogen's plus one, oxygen's minus two. But if we'd have hydrogen peroxide, we have plus one and the minus one combination. Now these aren't very stable, um, but hydrogen peroxide is used quite a bit. And so we want to make sure we're very familiar with those. All right, a couple of other quick rules. If it's covalent or molecular, you assign the most electronegative element as negative as it can be according to the periodic table. Okay, so if I have SO2, for example, I have one sulfur, don't know its oxidation number, two oxygens, it's not going to be a peroxide unless it's with hydrogen or a metal, so it's negative two, um, and then it's zero, so sulfur dioxide gas, the sulfur is going to be plus four oxidation number. So oxygen was the most negative, you make it as negative as it can be, which is a negative two, and then you calculate the other element. Okay, um, we've already done this rule. The sum of oxidation numbers of a neutral compound is zero. So, and if it's not zero, you simply set it equal to the charge. And um, so in this case, we had PO4, three negative. So, we didn't know what the phosphorus was. You'll typically have to calculate one. We have four oxygens, they're each minus two. I had a leftover negative three charge. So phosphorus plus or minus plus a negative eight is equal to negative three. So phosphorus was equal to plus five in that case. So that's how you apply that rule. Let's do a couple of quick ones and I hope um, that it would help you. We've got calculate oxygen in calcium oxide. I have one calcium, it's group two, so it's plus two. I have two oxygens. Um, we always want to double check oxygen with group one, two, hydrogen, and that's zero. And if we did, we'd come out with a negative one. 
Um, dichromate, oh, I hope you know your polyatomic ions, Cr2, O7, 2 minus. So I've got two chromiums, don't know its charge, seven oxygens, they're each minus two. That gives me a leftover charge of minus two. So 2x minus 14 is equal to minus two. 2x is equal to 12x, that each individual chromium is equal to plus six. Hopefully soon you can come up with some patterns so that it's a little faster to do that. Couple quick ones, phosphor rus acid, H3PO3, three hydrogens, not with a metal by itself, so it's plus one. I don't know the phosphorus. I have three oxygens, it's minus two, okay, and I have a zero overall. And if you do that algebra, you should come up with the um, phosphorus as being plus three. So if you look on the periodic table and see that pattern, I hope you can see that there's kind of a range for oxygen from negative three up to plus five. All right, you'll see your, your halogens do some very unique things as well. Okay, um, I think in fact the oxidation number of lead in lead nitrate is pretty straightforward. Each nitrate is minus two, or ex excuse me, minus one for a total of minus two. So that means the lead is plus two. But what about something like our perchlorate, ClO4 negative? Just to throw in a, a one to help you realize how unusual these can be. Well, I've got one chlorine. I don't know its oxidation number. It can be anything from minus one to plus seven. So you've got to, got to calculate those. Okay, plus four oxygens each at minus two, I have a negative one left over, and indeed X is equal to plus seven. So the oxidation number of the chlorine in this case is an unusual for what you may have seen up till now, plus seven. Okay, these take a lot of practice. And there's, I'm sure there's all sorts of Quizlets online and cahoots and um, that type of thing. Practice in your book for, for doing these. Good luck. Thanks for joining me.